This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Thanks for checking out one of our past live sessions. If you had fun and enjoyed it, we'll hope you tune in for one of our future lives. And remember, if you're one of our paid members, you can watch these and all the rest of them anytime on your platform. Welcome to today's live. Today we're going to be making some adorable little unicorn cupcakes. If you haven't made a unicorn cake or anything like it yet, it's a nice fun little introduction and a little bit easier to handle than making the big pieces for a cake. So not only am I going to go over piping the cupcakes so you get a fun rainbow swirl, but also making your little gum paste ears and horns. And I thought since we're going to be using a variety of different star tips to do the different little piped dots and swirls on here, it would be a good time to go over some different techniques that you can do with your different star tips. So I have a couple of bags loaded up. And I'm just going to go over a few things, right? So the first thing, classic star tip use, would be a shell border, right? And this is just 21, 22 tip, right? Where you're squeezing a mass and then letting it trail off, right, against the surface. And then you can line them up to create a nice border. There's also a reverse shell where you spin it as if you're going to do a rosette, right? and then you go the other direction, right? And then you have things like your classic star, where depending on the tip you're using, this one's a large 2D, so I'm gonna hold it up off the surface a little higher. If you're using a smaller tip, you wanna be closer to the surface, right? And so the best thing to do is just kinda of lightly touch the surface that you're gonna pipe on. In this case, it's my tray. Lift it up a little bit, and just squeeze gently and let the frosting kind of balloon out nicely. Oop, and the paper wants to come up with it. And then stop squeezing and pull up. And that'll give you a nice full star, right? And then there's other things like a rosette, right? It's a little hard to do on paper. And then there's like the flat rosette where you're basically piping a star and then drawing around the edge. And you can use that if you want to do swirls on the side of a cake, you want to do it on top of a cupcake, but say you don't want to use a ton of frosting, it's a good one. And then there's simpler things like doing a classic zigzag where you're just basically kind of chugging along like a little caterpillar, right? And it's a nice little border if you don't know what to do, but you want to take up some space, right? Where you're just kind of going along. So you can use this to cover the side of a cake. You can use it to do a border at the bottom. Uh, you can use it just as a fun decorative detail to get stripes up the side. And another one is the rope. And this one is just a little bit harder, right? Where you're going to do kind of successive waves, right? It's just like a little upside down U shape. And when you trail off, you make the surface to go over again, right? So you can build up a rope border either on the bottom of your cake up the side, trim the top, and it just gives you a little variation, right? And I'll hold them up so you can see. Oh, sorry, let it focus. That's the shell, reverse shell, right? We have a nice little star, a nice full rosette, and then our flat rosette, a little zigzag, and a rope. And those are just some different things that you can do with your star tips. And if you use different sizes of tips with different numbers of times, you'll get a different effect. So you can create a wide variety with just your basic star tips. Right? And you can see I've got a few of them. I've got a 2D, so it's a big decorator tip. A number 18, a 22, and then I loaded up a smaller one, which is actually a 74, right, with a few different colors. So I went two solid, right, and two of them striped, so that I'll get some fun effects on my unicorns. So I'm going to put these aside for just a minute, and I'm going to make my little details so that we can finish them all at once. And I made some ahead of time, so you can see. Yay! Thanks for the hearts and the waves. My hands are busy, so I can't wave back right now. Um, and I've just got some white gum paste. I'm going to use a small fondant and gum paste roller. Roll that out. And then I'm going to use whatever cutter I have that's good for unicorn ears. In this case, it's just a nice 
small leaf cutter, but you could use anything like a triangle, an oval, whatever you've got on hand that'll give you approximately kind of horsier shapes, right? And I'm gonna cut out two of those for every one of my unicorns, right? And since these are kind of directional, right? Because it's got that little curve to it, I'm gonna turn half of them over and let them dry like that, right? So I have nice little pairs of ears. And then I'll get my horns ready. And the horns are probably the most important part and sometimes the part that looks the most awkward just because a lot of times what happens is people just go straight up with the spiral, right? And it can look a little um, suggestive. So you wanna make sure that you're coming to a point when you do that so that we don't have any unintended uh, little funny snickers about our unicorns, right? So I'm gonna start with a little yellow, right? Just added a little yellow, lemon yellow to my gum paste, and I'm gonna roll a nice little coil and it doesn't take very much, right? This is probably like a large pea sized amount. And then I'm just gonna take one of my fingers since I'm doing a small one and thin it in the middle, right? That gives me a starting point for that tapered point, right? And I'm just gonna go out like that. And you can see now I've got a thin spot that I can just grab a hold of and start twisting. And that will give me a natural little point there and then I can spiral the whole thing down, right? And if you have some excess, you can always trim that off, right? And then I usually just use a nice clean toothpick, insert it in there, and then I keep some little foam blocks on hand for any of my gum paste pieces that need to dry. And so I went ahead and made a couple and I've got one that's already firm and ready to go along with a pair of ears. And I'm just gonna grab some of my highlighter gold that I have mixed with, uh, in this case, vodka, but you can use any clear alcohol or extract. Just keep in mind if it's an extract, you probably stay, wanna stay away from almond just in case anyone has a nut allergy, but things like lemon are okay to use. And I'm gonna use it just to paint gold on there. And this is one of those times where if you have like edible glitter or any of those kinds of products, you can sparkle it on while it's still wet and make it extra blingy and beautiful. And you can do these in any color too. So you could use an edible pearl dust um, on like pink or purple horns or blue, but that'll give us a nice gold shimmer, right? And then I'm gonna take a pair of my ears and do the same thing. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of gold for the center of the ear. And I have some of those prepped and ready to go. Beautiful. So when I have those ready, I'm gonna set them aside and I'm ready to decorate my cupcakes. So I'm gonna pull some cupcakes out and go to town. And I like to start with either a big rosette or star in the middle, right? And since I've striped the bag, you can see I already get a nice swirl and then do something like stars around the outside edge, right? But you can also do like a big ruffly star in the center and then go around with your smaller things. And by burying the colors that are in your bags, you can vary the look of your cupcakes, right? So we can do some rosettes. or some more ruffly stars. And just keep going. And I try to fill the entire kind of top surface of the cupcake and make sure that it meets up with the paper. If you do that, it'll give less room for the moisture to evaporate out of the cupcakes because there's nothing worse than having an absolutely gorgeous cupcake and biting into it and finding out that it's dry and stale. All right. So just keep going until you fill up that surface. And so by varying the, the patterns and the piping techniques I use, I can make each of them look a little subtly different. And then once my little decorations are nice and dry, right, I can take that off, 
Stick him right in the center and just take those ears and stick them right down in there, right? And we get a beautiful little unicorn. Well, try and hold it to the side without everything falling off. And if anything looks a little wobbly or unstable or you have any thin spots, you can always go back in with your bag and add a little more. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish my other one. And since I'm finishing these little guys, if anyone has any questions, now is a perfect time. I see lots of smileys, thank you, and hearts. Oops. I'll just go right down in there with that. And it is, of course, a little better if you wait for the gold to dry because then it doesn't come off on your fingers or your tweezers. Right. Beautiful. And so you can see, you can kind of vary up the look a little bit by varying up your piping techniques and which bags you use to finish each one so you can get a nice display. And these make a nice accompaniment if you're gonna do a, a unicorn cake, but say you don't wanna make an absolutely huge one your first time out of the gate. And they're a great, simple little project. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.